all year because they got some guys that now that can get through the hole and got some speed. Let's go deeper into the injury report with Dr. Scott Adams. Injury Report is brought to you by Orthopedic Associates of Central Maryland. In pain, contact the experts at Orthopedic Associates of Central Maryland at mdphonedocs.com. Care this good feels good to the bone. Injury Report. Doc, let's start with J.K. Dobbins. He was placed on IR. We talked about him every single week and the gruesome injury that he suffered. Suffered a setback on Sunday where John Harbaugh said his knee tightened up. He's supposed to miss four to six weeks. But what does arthroscopic knee surgery entail? And I guess it's safe to assume we're not going to see that 2020 J.K. Dobbins form this year. Well, it depends. The timeline of four to six weeks changes what the thought process is for the type of injury. So this is most likely either the meniscus that we knew he had injured because he said himself that there was a meniscus injury. So one of two things with that meniscus, he could have had a repair where they put stitches in it to try to get it to heal. And either part of it didn't heal or it healed and he retore part of it and may just need an arthroscopic cleanup and that can if you just go in to clean up that torn piece of tissue that is absolutely the four to six week timeline another thing it could be is a little bit of scar tissue could have broken off into the knee and that just needs a little cleanup an acl injury while we talk about them every week and they seem so common it's still a very big injury and up to 20% of folks need another procedure after they have an ACL surgery. And so it's not all that unusual for this to happen. And in his case, the prime suspect is probably that meniscus. And if it's a four to six week timeline, that means they're just going to make two little nicks in the skin, go in, put a camera in, see where that tissue is torn. And if it's the four to six week timeline, that means they're just going to clip out that little piece of tissue. Then you can usually weight bear right away. You can bend the knee right away. You can start your rehab had right away with the goal of being back four to six weeks. This is arguably the least invasive procedure that you could do on the knee, and we know since it is such a short timeline that it probably not related to the ACL or the AC, uh, LCL, because if either of those got re-injured, we're talking season. You know what's funny, Doc, is when I had my ACL in that, that fall, you know, I had uh, I had a little cleanup procedure, too, during, during training camp. Now, back to the Dobbins plight. I saw it on the film. He cuts up, and then all of a sudden his left leg kind of goes limp, or he just kind of lifted it up off the ground, and I said, something's wrong there. He, you know, and, and then he went right down and never was back again, and they said, oh, his knee tightened up? I said, no. It, it was, you know, from having knee surgery like that, and when some, something gave out on him. Sure, and anytime you see that, the first thought is, oh man, is the ACL affected? Right. But again, in theory, it just can't be if it's a four to six week timeline. If you re-injure that graft, it is every bit of a year recovery because it will take another reconstruction to get the knee stable. So the fact that we're talking about four to six weeks tells us it's not nearly that serious. I guess it's safe to say, and look, not all injuries are the same, but... This is kind of a cautionary tale for Gus Edwards, who's making his season debut today. I, I guess fans need to have tempered expectations, and maybe the Ravens handle him even more cautiously than J.K. Dobbins. Sure, you figure at this point, since he is now considered a go, you figure that he's been doing the return to play and practice, and he's been doing limited participation. At this point, if they feel that his knee is solid enough to play in the game, then he's ready to play. And I think unless he feels anything during warm-ups or in the beginning of the game, I think it's fine to let him continue to play. Unfortunately, obviously, injuries happen in sports, and J.K. Dobbins is a good example but it's not a guarantee that uh, Gus Edwards is going to experience the same type of experience. If the knee is stable and he's doing well, then he should be able to participate, and the majority of folks who make it back to this point can continue to participate. Doc, you know what's kind of interesting was because um, Gus Bus he just had an ACL, whereas Dobbins had much more, you know, I mean, a worse surgery, and he was back that much. He was back way quicker you know, and maybe probably didn't really, I guess, shouldn't have been back yet, maybe. I just, I still don't think, Doc, that he's coming back full 
till next year. Sure, it is tough. And, I mean, he did have more than the ACL. Right. We know that there is some LCL component, whether it was a big enough injury that needed a reconstruction or whether that could have been treated conservatively. We know he had more than an isolated ACL injury. And the fact that he came back still suggests that he was ready, that he had passed all the return-to-play right. parameters, and then that it was the meniscus, which, again, is arguably the weakest link in that whole conversation, was the one that probably set him back with Gus, even though he had less of an injury, at least on paper, it still uh, says that his knee just took longer to get stronger or to get his motion back or to just feel comfortable being out there. He's Dr. Scott Adams. Doc, thanks so much. Great information as always. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Doc. Coming up next, we're going to climb the depth chart, which, again, injuries, that's a big factor in why the, uh, some players are climbing the depth chart, and we're going to go behind. And